Today we will discuss a delicious theorem, the ham sandwich theorem. This is a theorem about geometric measure theory, but it will be proven by homology and indeed it will be an instance or an application of the borsak ulam theorem. It is a statement about bisecting sets in Euclidean space. And it was proven by Banach in the 1930s. So let A1 up to AM be Borel sets, or if you want measurable sets, of R to the M with finite Lebesgue measure. And then the statement is, a surprising statement, I think, there is a hyperplane in R to the M, an affine hyperplane, that bisects these sets in such a way that for each set it is bisected into two subsets of equal Lebesgue measure. Fine hyperplane of R to the M that cuts each subset AI into two of equal Lebesgue measure. Sorry, now I combined the two words into two subsets of equal measure. So if you have something like, you have a question? No, I, say what you want to say and then I'll do a remark. No, I just want to draw this uh, picture for m equals 2. So if you have something like that, and these two two-dimensional figures in R to the 2, then the bisecting Hyperplane is a line in that case, could be something like, well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe this hyperplane approximately. Mm -hmm. Or maybe in R to the 3, so what you could think of if, if those three sets in R to the 3 were three boards of whatever radius it might be, then you have an affine plane that goes through the three, three center points of those boards. Yeah? Three points determine a plane. And this will be the plane which dissects all three balls into equal parts. And in that sense, it's maybe not so surprising. But the, of course, the point is that they, these sets don't have to be ball shaped. Yeah? So if you know, uh, just replace them or deform them in any way whatsoever, then there still exists such a plane which dissects them. That's the surprising yeah. part. And, and being measurable is almost no condition on the geometry yes. forming. They can be very wild. And uh, we should look at the three-dimensional example uh, in a second. Okay, so let's demonstrate the statement before we prove it. And for that we have a little real-world demonstration. So I don't have ham at home, uh, therefore there is a cheese sandwich. And actually I don't have... I, 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 only have uh, this, this block of cheese, uh, not a slice of cheese, but anyway. We have two slices of bread and a piece of cheese, and these are three subsets of R to the 3. The two slices of bread and the cheese. Okay, and they have a certain volume, three-dimensional volume, and you want to make a sandwich out of that. Actually, it doesn't look that delicious <laughs> in this example, but you want to um, cut this sandwich in half to share it with your friend. And to share it with your friend, there are various definitions of uh, fair dividing this sandwich. I mean, you could say 
the whole sandwich has a total volume and we just want to uh, bisect the sandwich into two pieces that have the same volume. But that's not subtle enough. We, such a sandwich in that uh, situation has three pieces and of course you want half of the cheese and maybe the two slices of bread are not completely identical. There could be butter on, on, on one slice of bread. So you want equal pieces of each of the three ingredients mm -hmm. of the sandwich. I mean usually if you if you are preparing a cheese sandwich, then you would place these three sets one on top of the other. But the Boso, um, the ham sandwich theorem actually would also work if they are somewhere in space. So maybe exactly. this is exactly. always only like this very special constellation that we're so interested in. So what you would do in reality is you stack them onto each other. <laughs> I wouldn't want to eat it. And you just uh, divide it into halves like that. But as you said, I mean, these are three pieces that could lie in three-dimensional space somewhere. They, for example, uh, could be like that, all right? And now you want to find a hyperplane, a two-dimensional hyperplane, which is simulated by this knife. Mm -hmm. So that the blade uh, extends to a two-dimensional hyperplane. And you want to find this hyperplane in such a way that if you cut it there, all the three pieces, the two slices of bread and the cheese, get bisected into pieces of equal measure. Well, go give it a try. Well... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Maybe... Maybe it's like that? I mean, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really cut in this situation. But I, I could imagine that you need a certain angle of this blade and... Maybe like that. You're convincing, right? <laughs> but, <Absolutely. laughs> but as we will see, the proof of this theorem is non-constructive. It doesn't give us a clue how to do it. But I know there is one setting. I mean, there is there is a way to hold this blade such that I cut it along this um, blade, this this hyperplane described by the knife blade. Then I will get mm -hmm. equal pieces. <laughs> All right, let's move over to the proof. So let's prove this theorem now using the borsok ulam theorem. The starting point is to embed this situation into an Euclidean space of one dimension higher, so we regard R to the M is a subset, as an affine hyperplane of R to the M plus 1. And we will apply borsak ulam to a function or a map from SM to R to the M. Since SM is naturally a subset of R to the M plus 1, we start by embedding this situation into R to the M plus 1. For a vector x in R to the M plus 1, a non-zero vector, I want to define three subsets. draw them in a second. So the first one is a hyperplane, an affine hyperplane in R to the M. So we take all the vectors that are orthogonal to X. That's a subspace of R to the M plus 1. But then we intersect this subspace with this affine copy of R to the M. And then we end up with, an, with uh, something in R to the M plus 1. And then there is Hx uh, plus and Hx minus. So this is similar to the definition of Hx, but now we require that this scalar product is either positive or negative.
So let's draw this for the situation of m equal to 2, and then everything gets embedded into three-dimensional space. We have this affine copy of R2 inside three-dimensional space. If we have a vector x, which I draw at the origin of three-dimensional space, so let's, for example, uh, put it here, so this is my x, then hx is obtained by looking first at the subspace, which is orthogonal to x, which is this first subspace in brackets. So there is something like, like that here. Um, this uh, gray shaded plane, two-dimensional plane um, is the thing in brackets and then I draw the intersection with this affine two-dimensional plane and I end up with something like that here which is hx. And then of course we have here hx plus and here we have hx minus. And if we started in that picture, uh, the number of these sets ai is 2. So we want to find an x such that this blue affine subspace of R2 that we obtain um, bisects these sets into pieces of equal measure. So complete the picture, let me indicate here A1 and A2. How do we find this x? And um, well, okay, there, there is one exceptional case I should mention. It could be that what I define as hx is actually empty. And this happens if the vector x is uh, orthogonal to this affine hyperplane r2 times 1. If that is the case, um, the, the gray area or gray plane does not intersect this affine hyperplane and then the intersection is zero. But the x that we will construct out of applying borsuk ulam will be not of that kind. In that situation it will be um, an affine hyperplane in this copy of R2. So it, what we end up with will be an m minus one dimensional uh, hyperplane in R to the m. So how do we define or how do we apply this borsuk ulam now? So maybe I keep the picture here. We need a function from Sm to R to the M. And I give you the coordinate functions. Uh, maybe not in green. Define Fi from S to the M to R to the M, sorry, to R the coordinate function, by setting fix equal to the Lebesgue measure, which I denote by lambda, Lebesgue measure, of ai intersected hx plus. So let's be precise here because we have r to the m in the picture and we have r to the m plus 1. We are interested in the m-dimensional Lebesgue measure of that subset regarded as a subset of r to the m. So maybe I indicate that by writing um, lambda m, m dimensional Lebesgue measure. And note that if I replace x by minus x, the roles of hx plus and hx minus gets interchanged. So minus x is lambda m of hi intersected hx minus. And if I assemble now everything into a function from sm to rm, 
such that fx is given by the coordinate functions fix then you see how to apply borsak ulam borsak ulam will give us a point x such that fx is equal to f minus x and for that point the lebesgue measures of somehow the positive half into which h ai gets bisected by the hyperplane hx is equal to the measure of the uh, quotation marks negative part. And uh, if this sets h, uh, not h, if this sets ai has a positive Lebesgue measure, then you see that the x that we obtain from borsak ulam will be such that um, this hx cannot be empty. So we cannot be in the situation where this gray plane is parallel to this fn copy of R2, because otherwise all these uh, measures would be zero. And then you can take whatever plane you like to dissect those. <laughs> those well, in, in the situation yes. where the AI has zero yes. Lebesgue measure, you can take any plane yeah. you like. So that's a trivial statement there. Mm -hmm. OK, to apply borsak ulam we need a minimal condition, namely the continuity of the map F. But provided <coughs> f is continuous, <coughs> Borsak Ulam implies the theorem, concludes the proof. Why is it continuous? Well, if you give us a convergent sequence of points x n converging to x, then we want that the sequence of measures of a i intersected h plus x n converges to the measure of a i intersected h x plus. All right, so let's maybe do it step by step. Let xn converging to x be a se converging sequence in R to the m without the origin and the measures should converge. We can write the measures as integral integrals over the characteristic functions. What can we say about the characteristic functions? The characteristic function of a i intersected h plus x n, I claim, converges pointwise to a i intersected h plus x almost everywhere. almost everywhere. We can be more precise than that. At which points does, um, do we have a convergence? So if we plug in a point y into the characteristic function, when does the sequence we obtain converge to yeah, what we have here if we plug in this point y? As long as this point y does not lie on hx, this sequence, where if we plug in y, will be eventually equal to that. So, to be more precise, for y not in hx, um, but y in this uh, subspace um, r to the m, 
this f fine copy of r to the m, we have that the sequence is eventually what we have on the right hand side. So for large m. That's pretty obvious. And if y lies on this hx, we don't care because that's a subset of m dimensional back measure zero. So we still have pointwise convergence almost everywhere. And now we can apply the theorem of dominated convergence in a very easy situations where we have that the measure of this subset is just integral over the characteristic function. And this integral converges to the integral over this characteristic function, uh, which is the measure of that subset that you see here. And um, this concludes that this coordinate function here is actually a continuous function. Functions are just dominated by one. Yeah, they're dominated by one, exactly. All right. And that concludes the proof of the ham sandwich theorem. So it's a beautiful theorem. The only thing is that the bosok ulam theorem um, was a mere existence statement, yeah? So the proof went by contradiction. So it would be kind of nice if in some geometric setting one has those sets AI and would really like constructively find this a fine hyperplane. Do you have yeah. any idea? I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. This is just an existence theorem and gives you no idea how to construct your hyperplane. In general, to, to have something constructive, we, we need a consensus how to describe these AIs, right? How do you, what, what's the input data of the AIs? And that's not so easy. I mean, you might say they're somehow given maybe by inequalities, polynomial inequalities, something like that. Um, but there is something constructive uh, that you can do. So you could formulate a version that is for points, which is combinatorial. So let's say each of the subsets AI is a finite point set in R to the N. And then you could ask for a hyperplane that bisects each of these finite point sets in a way that half of the points is on the other in, on one side and half of the points of AI is on the other side. Actually, that proof would probably work, right? I mean, if you would use counting measure instead of Lebesgue measure, you still have the dominated convergence theorem. You would still get the statement that something like that exists, right? It's a bit, um, it's a bit more subtle because of the continuity, I think because there are chumps in this function then. So it's not a continuous function. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you can simulate the proof. Yeah, in okay, general, what you okay. could do mm -hmm. is um, up to some small minor technicalities. So for example, mm -hmm. you have to think about if you have an odd number of points in, in a set, set I, AI, what do you mean by intersect? Mm -hmm. One definition that would work would be that the hyperplane goes through one more. point mm -hmm. and then on each yeah, okay. side there is uh, the same number of points. So up to these minor mm -hmm. technicalities, basically what you also could do is you take the, all these um, finitely many points and put very small balls around them so that mm -hmm. the balls don't intersect. Mm -hmm. And these balls then have a and positive then works, back yes, measure yes. Mm -hmm. and then you apply it for that. Mm -hmm. And up to these minor technicalities, as I said, um, you can deduce this finite point version from that version then. But maybe you can also imitate the proof to give a more direct argument. Yeah, not directly, you're right. Yeah. But anyway. In, in any case, you can prove this combinatorial statement where AIs are finite point sets. And instead of Lebesgue measure, you just take the counting measures. 
And then you can, of course, uh, ask this reasonable question, can you do this algorithmically? Can you write down a computer program that gives you in a reasonable running time the hyperplane? And that you can actually do. For that, there are algorithms. Mm -hmm. And if you have then like an arbitrary, more arbitrary subset, you could think about somehow approximating this subset by finitely many points in such a way that where the area or the volume is large, you put mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. points into that. Like Something evenly like that. spread out through the sets. Sort yeah. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can actually formulate or develop more constructive versions of, on that. But the most beautiful statement mm -hmm. is the non-constructive one.